Let's take a look at this project. This is uh, cracking a short RSA key, and just for generality, rather than using the Python on my Mac, I'm going to use Google Colab because every student can use this even if you have a Windows or anything. So just go to colab.google.com and sign in, and now you can run Python there. So here's um, RSA. The public key is N and E, and the private key is D. You do it by making two large primes, P and Q, and by tradition, P is the smaller of the two primes. Then you multiply them together to make N. Then you calculate Euler's totient, which is P minus 1 times Q minus 1, and that is the actual number of values between 1 to N that you can use. And um, then you select a public exponent, which is typically just 3 or 65, 536, and then you find the multiplicative inverse of E mod phi, and that is the decryption key. So we're going to do that. So here's the problem statement. Megan has a public key, which is what, about 15 digits, and 5 is E. Find her private key. That's the problem. If your key is only this long, it's not long enough, and people can hack in, and we're going to hack in. So we need to have Pi Crypto Dome. Now, if you're using Google... Um, if you're using Google Colab, then you have to put an exclamation point before a, a bash command like that. So put an exclamation point and then that and run that and that should install Pi Crypto Dome, which might even be already installed, but I guess it'll tell us that. Collecting, I guess it was not installed, so now it's downloading it and installing it. Okay. All right. So... Now we're going to find that here's n, so we're going to find the square root of it. We import math and then print the square root. All right. So that's this number, uh, 100 million, 7, 11, 4, 6, 15 or so. That's the square root. So um, if p and q multiply to make n, so one of them must be less than the square root and the other one must be greater than the square root. That's what must happen. So um, what we're going to do is um, just start at C, which is this number, 100, 7, 11, 4, 15, and we're going to start at 413, because it can't be equal to the square root. It's not piece, then it wouldn't be, it has to be two different prime numbers that are multiplied. So we're going to start at 13, we're going to go down by 2 every time and try only the odd numbers, because the even numbers cannot be prime, and we're just going to um, try the first 20 numbers below the square root and see if any of them are factors of n. And the easiest way to do that is calculate n percent i. That is n mod i. And that will be zero if it is a multiple factor, if it's an integral factor. That's the fastest way to do it. And modular, modulus is a very fast operation in Python. So this will not take long even for big numbers. Not that these are very big numbers. And there you go. You can see the third number here has an answer of zero. So this is a factor. This is P, 107.11.409. It was near the square root, which is a situation that makes it very easy. So now we know P. We can calculate Q. We know P, so Q is just N over P. And if we're worried about this being a rounded, rounded off wrong, which is a very reasonable worry, you might wonder if, it's, if these numbers are not exact, then it's good to test it. So N over P should work, and then to test it, I'm going to print p, q, n, p times q, and n minus p times q. And so if it's right, then I'll get, um, so here's p and here's q, here's p times q, here's n, and as you can see, they match, and p times q minus n is zero, so now I know p and q. All right, since I know p and q, I can compute all everything I need to. Here's phi of n, p minus 1 times q minus 1. That's a number that's essential to find the decryption key. All right. It's um, p, q, n, phi of n. n is 101, and this is also 101. It's phi of n is a little bit less than n. It always is. It's p minus 1 times q minus 1. It's also an even number. It's not the product of two primes. It's the product of one less than each of those two primes. So now you calculate the D. D times E mod phi is 1. That makes it the multiplicative inverse of E because when we raise the plain text to the E, we'll be encrypting it, 
And when we take the ciphertext to the D, we'll decrypt it because D times E is phi, and phi takes you all the way around the circle using all possible values, so you get back to one. So we know that E equals five. Okay, and so you can use the pi cryptodome library to do the inverse. I'm reporting it from here, so this is one way to do it. This will find the inverse of E which requires a sort of iterative process that you can't just do it trivially, but they included an inverse function here. So this will calculate the inverse of E modulus phi is D. So there's D. Here's N and there's D is quite a bit smaller, but that's, now we, now we have the decryption. So now we can encrypt a message. So if I have hi, I wanna send that, sending three numbers. Um, I'm gonna convert it to three bytes of ASCII and then interpret it as a single 24-bit binary value. So I take the ORD, which turns the ASCII value of HI, and then I take the left one times 256 squared, the next one times 256, and the last one times one. So this one number X encodes three bytes of ASCII. It's just one of the many ways to do that. So that number stands for the word high, 47, 45, 55. So to encrypt it, I take it to the E mod N. That takes it to the encryption key, which is five mod N. So it turns that number into this number. That's the encrypted version of it. And now to decrypt it, I take the ciphertext to the D mod N. So that's gonna be my XX is my decrypted stuff. And it's gonna take forever because it's trying to take something to this number, 247 trillion or something, that's never gonna happen. So I stop this calculation, it'll never finish. You have to use a smarter algorithm and the right algorithm to use is the POW function. The POW function is smart enough to do this efficiently. And if you read the textbook, it talks about this. There are efficient ways to do it where instead of um, raising it to the power over and over, you raise it only to powers of two by self-multiplying and then you take the binary version. So it only takes the logarithm of as many steps. There are smarter ways to do the power of a large number, and that's what this POW function does. So let's just replace this with that. We'll take POW of YDN. And the point is um, here, I didn't, in it tried to calculate this without including the fact that it was modulus N. POW is smart enough to realize it's modulus N and save a lot of time by including that all along. So this, happens right away, and you see it works. It brought me back to my original number, 47, 45, 505. Now to convert it to readable text, there's a lot of ways to do it. This is one way. By the way, there's another way. If I just print, probably what I would do now, when I did this, I, did, I would just do hex of xx. And now it's just readable ASCII, 48, 69, 21. If you know your ASCII, you can just trade those back one by one. However, here's another way to do it. You pick those numbers out and then put care of each there. That'll work too. And so you get 72, 105, 33, and that's HI exclamation point. So that's how you encrypt and decrypt a message and it's how you crack a key. So now there's a couple flags. You encrypt something using the same key and then you encrypt this using the same keys. And um, then here's another public key and you're gonna have to decrypt it without knowing the private key, so you're gonna have to crack it and so on. So there's just a few things you do here just to play with these and get used to RSA encryption and the prime number calculations. So that's what I wanted to show you. I'm gonna stop this recording.